Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue red Phyrexian Prison deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring three copies of Ourobrask Heretic Praetor, the 5 mana 4 4 legendary Phyrexian with haste, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library, and you may play it this turn, so it's kind of like drawing two cards per turn almost. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, the next time they would draw a card that turn, instead they exile the top card of their library, and they may play it this turn. So that forces the opponent to play every card they top deck for the turn, which can lead to some awkward sequencing or some suboptimal plays. And if they exile a very expensive card or a more conditional card, like maybe a counter spell, they may not be able to play it. So we just take away the opponent's draw step altogether. And then we also have three copies of a Jin Gitaxis Progress Tyrant, the 7 mana 5 5 Phyrexian, saying whenever we cast our first instant, sorcery, or even artifact each turn, we get to copy it and choose new targets for the copy. And whenever an opponent tries to cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery each turn, it gets countered. So it can be very punishing against decks that rely on some instants and sorceries. And if we get both a Jin Gitaxis and Urbrask in play at the same time, We've probably already won the game, but it also sets up a fun scenario where if the opponent is top decking, they maybe found an answer to Ourobrask or Jengitaxis, but because it gets exiled by Ourobrask's ability, they won't be able to keep it in hand to try and double spell to beat Jengitaxis ability, so that kind of locks the opponent out of the game, and that's sort of the prison element of this deck. But just getting to untap with one of our Franks and Praetors is already often enough to win the game. And then the rest of our deck is kind of your typical blue-red control deck with some cheap interaction, featuring four copies of Strangle, another great addition from Streets of New Capenna, dealing three to a creature or planeswalker at sorcery speed. Fading Hope, a one mana instant speed bounce spell, can also use it to maybe save one of our Praetors from removal. Also plays very nicely with our one-off copy of Lear, Disciple of the Drowned, which lets us flashback spells from our graveyard, so we can maybe flashback a Fading Hope to save Lear and pick it back up. Also have a one-off copy of Consider, which plays well with Leer putting additional cards in the graveyard, and can also maybe copy it with a Jinkitaxis in the opponent's turn, so we get to double dip. And then at 2 mana we've got a couple copies of Dwari Disruption, not the best synergy with Leer, but just gives us an early play and can always play it as a tap land, since our deck is quite mana hungry, so it doesn't hurt to have a few more lands in our mana base. And then we also have the full set of Expressive Iteration, another mainstay of these blue-red control decks, providing a nice 2 for 1, and also plays nicely with the 1 mana interaction, as we can still maybe play those after hitting our land drop in a turn 3 iteration. And then Demon Bolt can be foretold, then dealing 4 damage, which can sometimes make the difference between 3 and 4. And then at 3 mana, Seismic Wave, it's kind of a pseudo sweeper dealing one to multiple creatures. We've got Prismari Command, which can also deal with artifacts, maybe it lets us loot or can make a treasure token for ramp. The Celestus, despite being legendary, a bit of a nombo with Jingitaxis, which won't be able to double it and keep both copies in play, but just the most effective three mana ramp artifact that also lets us loot and gain a bit of life in the process. And then the one of Igneous Inspiration, which gives us access to our sideboard lessons, where we can maybe get a start from scratch as well as another answer to artifacts, teachings for card draw, can maybe gain some life with environmental sciences, especially relevant also if we can double these up with Jingitaxis or replay them with Leer. So despite being a one-off, we can maybe get multiple uses out of our lessons. And then Big Score from Streets of New Capenna replaces Windfall as a slightly easier to cast 4 mana instant, letting us make two treasures, discard a card and draw two. So also incredibly effective with Jenga Taxis, which can double it. And then Shatter's Go Smashing, another land that also counts as a removal spell. And then we've mentioned all the legendary creatures, which are also nice at enabling Soaring City to be cheaper to bounce an opposing card. And the Crucible of Defiance can maybe make some 1-1 tokens. And then two copies of Hall of the Storm Giant as an extra creature land that can maybe help play defense in the late game as we wait to find one of our Phyrexians. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable, especially against a creature deck. We've got a ton of interaction. So something like Mono White, I wouldn't mind facing. It's gonna be Asper instead, so not quite. Pass with Fading Hope up. So it might be a Scheming Seer deck. Could see an Underdog here, Thalia instead. That's something we might want to strangle. 
Although it does eventually die to Seismic Wave, problem is it's 4 mana. So by the time we can cast it, we're probably better off strangling. So, couldn't keep up uh, turn 2 Jory Disruption. So hopefully don't see Schemings here now. Just a tap land. And the backup Thalia. Okay, at least we can still Disruption. And then we can maybe catch Thalia with Seismic Wave. And Scheming Seer with one mana to pay for Disruption. Yep, that happens. And then I guess we'll end up bouncing Scheming Seer, paying the ward. And then Strangle plus Seismic Wave would eventually do it. The Scheming Seer would let them connive onto Thalia as well. So that could get out of range from Seismic Wave. So next turn I'm unable to wave plus Strangle. So I guess I might have to bounce for an extra turn and then we can set that up. Alright, I guess I'll keep it. So I might be better off playing a tapped Smashing. Or we could just play a tap disruption. Still a chance we can use it here. And then plan's gonna be bounce scheming seer again. Although I guess hmm. It still doesn't quite work the way I wanted to, since they'll still get that one attack to put a plus one counter on Thalia potentially. So that's kind of annoying. Do we just let this happen? No, I think we're fading hope still. And big score is fine. Okay. Could just go for big score. There's always a chance they discard land with the connive and then it could still work out. So I guess we'll try that. Pass with big score. Maybe discarding disruption. Opponent played a land, so there's a chance they discard a land to connive. It's gonna be a Luminarch Aspirant instead. Okay, that makes our Seismic Wave a lot more promising. So, opponent moves to combat. In response, we can wave their face and finish off the One Toughness creatures. Opponent with an Interceptor to bounce it. Okay. That changes the equation. Opponent discarding a Scheming Seer, but they might have another one in hand. So they get to put a counter somewhere, but we can still wave plus Triangle next turn to clean up the board. So let's do that. Wave killing Thalia, and then Strangle finishes off the Interceptor. Or we can strangle first, killing Thalia, and then wave, which I can then do at instant speed, although we don't want Aspirin to trigger. So probably better to just do it main phase. And then probably end up discarding the disruption to big score. All right. Still suspect a Scheming Seer in hand. Another Aspirant instead. That's fine. And now we can main phase big score. Discard. Probably Disruption at this point. And Fertal Demon Bolts. Demon Bolt can answer Cave of the Frost Dragon. Hopefully in response to an Aspirant putting a 
counter on it. Nope, still counter on itself. But uh, cave is much more difficult for us to interact with, so we'll kill that. And then all of the storm giants can block Aspirant if needed. Okay, to play one more land out. Don't really want to race, so we'll pass. And then keep one land in hand to discard to another big score. Initiates, that's fine. And probably not going to see any more attacks. Unless they've got instant speed removal for Hall. There's Jin Gitaxius, awesome. Now if we tap out for Jin, they do get an attack with Aspirant, potentially. What happens if we play Jin? they have another Interceptor, bounce it, then we're just dead on the way back, aren't we? Seven mana, there's no way we can also activate Hall. So maybe I should keep Jin in hand until I can play a cheap instant alongside it to stabilize us, so we don't lose an Interceptor necessarily. And for now, just keep Hall on defense. Spellbinder, gonna have a look. That's annoying. Makes me regret not playing Jin now. And also gives the opponent a flying creature to apply pressure with. But if we draw like a Strangle or some other cheap removal spell, we're still probably fine. Aspirin triggers. Counter on Spellbinder. And no attacks. Another land to draw. So... Now if the opponent has an Interceptor, I think we're dead regardless. Since they can uh, attack with a team. And then... The Initiate also gets to train, so... Might as well run out Jin, since uh, we cannot beat Interceptor anyway. Okay, that resolved. So Spellbinder hits us for at least five. Although they could also attack with Aspirants. Since I would trade for Jin. Can just block the initiates. If they have Wandering Emperor, we're dead. So that's the reason to still block, but then it would be kind of a chum block since they get to grow with the Aspirant. So I think we fall to one and then hope to top deck some interaction for next turn. Big score is huge. Okay. Get to see four cards. Make a ton of mana, so we can still activate Hall, but we need to find an answer for Spellbinder. And Smashing will do. Another big score, and Soaring City, okay. So we probably want to big score in the opponent's turn if possible, although we don't want to take too many risks either. Second so Smashing, 4x equals 6 or more, 3, 3. Still leave Soaring City available, thanks to our legendary creature, in case they remove Jin so we can bounce Initiate. So yeah, I think we're smashing for 6 here. And then 3 each gets doubled, so I guess it's 6 each. That seems fine, can maybe spread it out like this. I guess I could use the Initiate to kill some of my treasures. Which is a reason to Soaring City the Initiate now. So they cannot stop deck removal and kill me. Okay, and then... Probably no point in attacking since we would lose Jin to Wandering Emperor. And that's not how we're going to win this game. Opponent plays initiates. 
We can iteration in our turn. And big score in the opponent's turn. Finds inspiration and the opponent scoops it up. Double iteration. Too much for them to handle. Wow, what an epic game here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that's packing a ton of cheap interaction. So I'll try it. Consider wants to find a third land and then Celestus lets us play any of our one drops afterwards. So that's quite efficient. And then we want to start digging towards some of our big heavy hitters as well, our various Phyrexians. So turn one, consider. See what the opponent's working with before deciding a black deck. So probably don't need a ton of cheap spot removal. I'll keep the mountain. And there's Leer. Gonna come in handy, especially alongside Fading Hope. And then we can maybe loot away some copies of Strangle with the Celestus. Probably don't want to play Leer unless we can also bounce it with Fading Hope. Although a red-black sacrifice deck, I guess it could still have Voltage Surge dealing 4 damage. But our opponent is missing their land drops. Still don't think I want to play Leer. So instead I guess we can activate Celestus. And then switch it to Knight, although just passing the turn would accomplish the same. But uh, yeah, might as well do it now, I guess. Reason not to do it is we could maybe draw a 4 mana instant we can play in the opponent's turn. One Strangle can go. And then I get to keep my Crucible in hand. Although could have also kept up Fading Hope, but probably want to save it for Leer. Fable. Would have been a fine target for Fading Hope, I suppose. Now I can just strangle the token, or I can play Leer Pass, and then if they want to make a treasure, they'll have to attack into our 3-4. Yeah, it's a little bit messy, so I think just strangling and passing is fine. And then next turn play a Leer with more options available. Could have once again activated Celestis as well. Don't think I'm making two 1 1 tokens. Opponents indeed holding Voltage Surge. So they might have another copy in hand. And a Harvester. Okay, so next turn I can play Leer, replay Strangle from the graveyard, and still have Fading Hope for protection. Celestis transforms. And Seismic Wave isn't bad either. So maybe discard another Strangle from hand. Put on Mind Voltage Surge, but we'll get to Strangle first. Consider another Neat's little synergy with Leer. But won't be able to use it if the opponent keeps red mana available, as we'll have to respect Voltage Surge. Reflection we can also easily take out. Synthesizer finds Spider Queen, which they luckily cannot play here, although Seismic Wave answers it perfectly. And an Anvil. So, Anvil part of the reason why I've included one Prismari Command and our card that lets us learn to maybe get a sideboard artifact removal spell as well. But Wave also cleans up all the 1-1s. One so no reason to bounce anything, so now we can consider. And Ourobrask seems like a nice pickup. Okay, so we can do the Wave, play Ourobrask, but then we wouldn't have protection mana up. So that's a little risky. Although opponent is down to one card in hand, although they can still sack Synthesizer to find some answers. Do we have to do the wave? We could just strangle Reflection and then... I still get to attack with Urabrask, maybe keep Leer back to block some of the incoming damage. We're still at 20. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. And then save wave for next turn. 
because the earlier we get Ourobrask down, the better. Could attack with both creatures if we really want. That's also not unreasonable, I suppose. And then the opponent might chum block with a token and sacrifice it to Anvil. A Meat Hook Massacre. Wouldn't be the end of the world since we can bounce Ourobrask and then bounce Leer with the same Fading Hope. So our opponent takes three. We could even use Crucible for two mana as we control two legendaries here. And it's going to be Obnixilus exiled, so they're forced to play now. Anvil triggers, sack and synthesizer to maybe look for removal. So they could sack another synthesizer and then play Obnixilus. But I'm just going for Obnixilus first. But yeah, this Seismic Wave is looking like a great answer. Opponent makes a Devil. Pluses, I'll take the damage. And then Seismic Wave can kill one of Nixilis while killing all the 1-1 tokens. So no need to Fading Hope anything. And then we would love to find some of our artifact removal. It's gonna be a big score, that's pretty nice. So we can start there. Discarding... Not sure what at this point, maybe Shadow Skull Smashing. Or Crucible. Okay, can hit our land for the turn. Seismic Wave. Two here, one to everything. And then we can strangle maybe the author of Nixilis. Although I guess that's true, the uh, constructs are artifacts, so they actually survive Seismic Wave. That's a detail I kind of forgot about. Okay, in that case, I can still attack. Opponent might triple block Ourobrask. We can just Fading Hope, and then Strangle can finish off of Nixilis. Opponent does set up the triple block, playing right into our plan. They can sack the token that we're bouncing so we don't get to scry. So now if they have a Meat Hook Massacre, I can only save one of my two creatures. But our opponent's left with just two anvils. My revenge will be so we'll see how this plays out. Pain. Or a Brask Exiles Hive. Which will be their land for the turn. Yeah, so this game might end up being decided by the fact that Seismic Wave cannot kill artifact creatures. Another of Nixilis with casualty. That happens. Jory Disruption, not particularly useful while we have a Leer in play, making everything uncounterable. And then I could Fading Hope the Devil so they don't gain life. Is that worth it? Probably want to keep Fading Hope to protect my own creatures. And then Disruption can go. But as soon as we find one artifact removal spell, we can deal with both anvils thanks to Leer. We're also digging towards Jingataxius, which will be quite effective. But yeah, double anvil represents a ton of chum blockers and a lot of damage that's difficult to avoid. Opponent passes. And what does Ourobrask exile here? Right, found a mountain and another disruption. So we can discard disruption to big score. Mm, 
do have a Hall of the Storm Giants we could also activate. Um, could activate Celestus to keep looting. Smashing can maybe deal with some of the Planeswalkers here too. So we have options. I guess Smashing for 3. And then just attack face. Keep Seismic Wave as instant speed removal for Hive. So I guess we can start by attacking, but yeah, opponent throws in the towel, I guess they feel like they're too far behind with uh, both our card or engines here in play. Alright, so on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand seems keepable. Consider into Demon Bolt for Tal. And uh, start hitting our land drops towards Jin. Opponent on a Naya deck. Probably don't need more lands. And there's Urabrask, alright, so we've got both Fraxians, a big score for ramp. So now I don't mind hitting a few extra land drops. Briefcase. So perhaps a tokens deck. So Demon Bolt not going to be at its best if that's the case. Take one. And then probably want a big score over another Demon Bolt, and we can discard Demon Bolt. Opponents with an Adjudicator, interesting. So maybe this is more of a five color deck. And then Briefcase represents three extra cards. Fleetfoot Dancer we can answer easily with Demon Bolt, so that's nice. So big score, probably still fine to discard a Demon Bolts and get Urbrask going. And then I think Bolts over Fading Hope. Even though we could keep our treasure to ramp out Jin, and then we can maybe double Demon Bolts. Think going Demon Bolt now and then Urbrask next turn with Fading Hope up is good enough. So we're a Brask smash for four. And now our opponent will have to start exiling cards. And especially early on in the game could be quite effective if our opponent exiles some expensive cards that they cannot play yet. They will be forced to play headquarters now. And our opponent gets in for one. And passes. And we get extra card advantage from Aura Brask. And we can cast pretty much everything we draw, including another Jin. Okay, get in for four. I guess your opponent could technically have Iganjo to deal for damage here. Seems unlikely in a five color deck. So we'll hit for four. Could have played Jin first to play around some sort of instance that deals damage to attacking creatures, I suppose. Opponent might have a counterspell. Sacred Fire just going face. Okay. Pathway will be their land for the turn if they don't want to lose it. So I haven't been too lucky with Urbrask in terms of stopping the opponent. But it's also hard to tell how effective that exile effect is being since we don't get to see what the opponent's holding and how their sequencing might be affected by it. But hopefully we get to untap, and then Fading Hope will offer protection to bounce our own creatures back, in case of removal. Opponent just running out the Adjudicators. And we'll take one. Big score, excellence. So probably fine to discard to one Fading Hope. Or we could get rid of Smashing. Let's get rid of Fading Hope. Draw a ton of extra cards, can big score again in the opponent's turn. And then for now, I guess we could strangle and inspiration, kill adjudicators, seems a bit drastic. Could just bounce it with a fading hope, or we can pass, not attack, and then 
try and get as much value as possible. So opponent playing five colors means it's pretty difficult to predict what they might play next. We're not a deck playing a ton of counter spells, so we can't stop any big expensive play from the opponents. So, while it's nice to have Jin and Urbrask both in play, the game's not over yet. Arlen, that resolves. Not an instant or sorcery, just makes a pair of wolf tokens, which we could bounce with Fading Hope doubled by Jin, but doubling a big score is much more satisfying. And then a mountain can go. There's a Jory Disruption, just in case. And then, how about we untap? Another Urabrask Exiled, wouldn't be making use of that. And, uh... We could double Seismic Wave. That seems pretty powerful. So we can deal... 2 damage to the Adjudicators. One to everything else, doubled, and then two to Arlen, one to everything else, and that should clear the entire board here. And attack for nine. And then, can I burn my opponent out? We can Inspiration put him to two. Didn't think there's anything in the sideboard I can learn for to deal two more damage. I guess I could have gone for Expanded Anatomy, that would have done it. Oh well, I guess we'll kill them next turn. And discard a Strangle. Also could have just dealt two damage to the opponent with a Seismic Wave and ignored Arlen. So we had a few ways to actually kill the opponent here, but that's okay. Always fun to have Jin and Torabrask in play for an extra turn. Binding, so I can triple Disruption here, thanks to Jin. Countering Binding. And another one. And that does it, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is pretty decent. In terms of sequencing, probably gonna play a tapped smashing since we have a lot of action in hand already. Facing a blue deck. Blue red. Hopefully it's not a mill deck since that's not a great matchup for us. Can consider end of turn and then next turn maybe iteration. Opponent doesn't have their own iteration, at least. And Pathway, do we want to keep it? Yeah, it's probably fine. Okay, so I could go for iteration. Could play around an opposing Jory Disruption and wait an extra turn. Which I also don't mind, since we're not really in a hurry. And keep up Seismic Wave. We're also not really missing any land drops, so if we use Iteration now we would be forced to kind of keep a land. Now we can big score instead. Puna not doing anything. Well, we could once again play around Disruption and not go for big score yet, which seems like a low opportunity cost, although if they counter this we get to maybe resolve Ourobrask. So that's still pretty decent. Yeah, I guess we can try this. Discard Mountain. And there's a Disruption. Let's hope they don't have two of them, because I'm about to tap out for Urbrask. Waiting until we can save it with Fading Hope, also reasonable. Opponent might have their own. Ah, there's Fading Hope. So don't need to worry about Jory Disruption anymore. Opponent doesn't seem to have their own threats. Do we try for Urabrask again? 
probably. And then Iteration can refuel. Fading Hope can save Ourobrask if they try and burn it. Alright, that hits. So they don't seem to have an immediate answer. Maybe a Sweeper next turn to deal 5. They'll be forced to make use of that Spike Field Hazard. Gonna be played as a land. And burn down the house. Bounce Ourobrask in response. And replay it. And then... Iteration can find some more expensive cards this time around. Ideally, we exile like a counter spell that the opponent cannot use. Just another land instead. Our brass gets to untap. Finding Prismari Command, still useful, and a Leer. Okay. Well, let's start by probably attacking. Can Prismari Command and wave at instant speed. Aha, uh -huh, Holebreaker Horror. Yeah, that would have been a reason to maybe play Leer first. That's okay, I'm happy if we can kill the Horror. So, if they want to block, we can finish it off. And then should probably Prismari Command. Can a lot of damage happen first, I suppose. Then Prismari Command. Deal 2, and then... Pretty happy with my hand, to be honest, so maybe we should just make a treasure. And then finish it off with Inspiration, maybe. And learn for Mascot Exhibition seems good, since I don't think we'll be able to use Teachings. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems acceptable. Some cheap one-mana interaction. Celestus for ramp. Can potentially loot away some lands as well. And we'll keep up the instant speed fading hope. Opponent with a cave. Can play hall, so it doesn't come into play tapped later. Opponent looks like a mono white aggro deck. Adversary probably want to strangle. So we can Celestus into Strangle. And then we may find ourselves passing the turn, letting it switch to Nighttime. Spellbinder can only take Fading Hope, which is not too bad at 3 mana. Although Iteration's a nice pickup, so that's probably worth playing now. Finding. Ourobrask, maybe another iteration, and then we can play iteration and hit our land drop with that one. Could even find another 1 mana interaction spell, but this works out. Alright, so iteration into iteration, and all of a sudden we're up quite a few cards. Inspiration could maybe kill a 3 toughness creature and then learn for... Our one damage removal. Alright, second spellbinder. Probably takes Orobrask now. So pretty effective at slowing us down. But yeah, we can make the aforementioned play, killing both spellbinders. Start from scratch. And now the board's clear. And we can maybe next turn deploy Orobrask. We'll have to watch out for Wandering Emperor exiling tapped creatures. And then there's also the possibility of a Cathar exiling it, but then we have plenty of answers. So opponent's probably sitting on Wandering Emperor, so we just play Orbrask without attacking, which solves that problem. And then we get to Draw two cards per turn, force the opponent to play their top decks. And yeah, there's Emperor. Just gonna make a token. 
exiling adversary, which they're now forced to play. We've got an answer to Brutal Cathar. Raidan could be quite effective, making our expensive spells even more expensive. But we can still kill it at 4 toughness. Big score is nice. And Leer. And our opponent scoops it up, yeah. This much card advantage. We could maybe Demon Bolt first and then still big score so we don't have to pay the extra mana for it. And our opponent's too far behind. Awesome. So, yeah, we got to see our Blue Rats Phyrexian deck in action. It's not that often that you get both Ourobrask and Jing Taxes in play at the same time, since the opponent probably conceded long before then, but uh, still a nice duo, and both individually very powerful as well. So if you're looking for a blue-red deck that maybe plays something other than Goldspan Dragon, this might be the deck for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.